Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new real life car review. In this episode, I'm driving the Lexus LC500 convertible, which I never thought I would say this season. And yet here we are. Before I start off, I want to say that I will stick to test normal, affordable cars. Well, affordable is a thing to say with car prices nowadays. But when Lexus offers you to drive an LC500, you don't say no. So uh, let's find out what this car is all about. And we'll start with a you know, walk around of this car and look at the, this specific version because this is an ultimate edition and the design changes that came with the model year update of 2023. So here we go. The LC500 was first introduced in 2017 and two years later, 2019, Lexus unveiled the convertible. Uh, people were amazed by this car and rightfully so. It was very close to the original concept car. I'll link in a picture over here. The coupe always been available as a three and a half liter V6 hybrid version and with a five liter V8 under the hood. The convertible, however, has never been available as a hybrid and only with a 5 liter V8. Reason being, there are a lot of reinforcements in the underbody and under the hood. And of course, you have the fully automated retractable roof, uh, which eat up a lot of space where the hybrid battery normally lives. So Lexus did a wise thing and chose to build this car as a V8 only. Last year, 2023, the LC500 got an update and the most important part of one of the important parts of that update was the change to the interior where it got, let me open up the door, the well-known Lexus and Toyota touchscreen infotainment system. I must say I like the design of the older dashboard better where you had the recessed part underneath the windscreen. Uh, where you had the infotainment screen, a clock and a nice illuminated panel. Now the dashboard structure of the upper dashboard from center to the passenger side is completely changed. However, this system is a big improvement over the older touchpad based system where you had a touchpad over here. Now you have the audio controls and a shortcut button to the heated and ventilated seats and heated steering wheel. Um, and speaking of which, a lot of LC500 convertibles have uh, a neck warmer where you have a fan over here in the headrest, but this version doesn't have that. We'll get into detail uh, in a minute. Anyway, let's close up the door, large door. Also with the model year update for 2023, uh, Lexus did rework the suspension. Um, this car does have adaptive variable suspension and it did some changes to the engine tuning for generating more torque, more even torque flow and exhaust tuning, which was very important for this car, as we'll see in a minute. When Lexus started producing the updated version, they first started with the Ultimate Edition. Now, if the Ultimate Edition implies that the production of the LC500 will soon stop, I don't know. I have asked the PR representative and he said, I can't answer that question. Doesn't matter, it's not really important because I think this car serves an important function within the Lexus lineup and has done much for the brand. It, after all, is a halo car. And I think they might introduce a new LC500, but heavily based on this uh, uh, architecture, this, this platform. I'm not sure if we'll keep the five liter V8, but I think we will keep a V8 with maybe slightly less displacement but always as a hybrid so i hope uh, and this is wishful thinking that a four liter v8 hybrid is in the works would be nice okay now let's have a close up to this ultimate edition you can immediately recognize it by its color this is called hakujin white it's inspired on japanese porcelain and yeah sorry for the flies all over the place but it's summer and this is a white color but it's a flat white paint and it does indeed it has some pearlescent effect and it does indeed remind me of porcelain it always comes with those lightweight special five spoke LOA wheels as you can see it has a huge steel brake rotor no carbon ceramics over here and huge scallopers 21 inch wheels they are wrapped in Michelin Pilots Pro S5 great tires no complaints there but as you can see we do have fair amount of play over there, so if you would you could even um, 
install larger brake rotors and larger calipers. We're going to continue to it at the back. Here is where the, uh, the seal caves in a little bit and that emphasizes the width of the hips, so to speak. In the back also 21 wing wheels, slightly wider, so it has a staggered wheel tire setup. And as you can see, all the chrome parts on the windows and where the retractable roof folds in is blacked out. Same goes for the taillights. But all in all, when you see this car in real life, it's amazing. And if you hear it, if you have heard it on videos, seen it on TV, the induction noise and the exhaust sound, well, in real life, it's even better. Not necessarily a pro, as I'll explain in the drive segment. Oh yeah, and then the interior, which you already have seen. This color is called Kachi Blue. The rooftop the soft top is also kachi blue but it's all blue and blue there are very nice color combinations available for the lc um, and it's something that i personally never have never have chosen the uh, same goes with a wheel and exterior color combination when i've been driving this car for a couple of days and it really grew on me this really is something special in real life but i'll show you in greater detail in the interior segment Okay, let's carry on our tour and let's start with the place where all the magic happens, under the hood. There we go, of course we have gas struts and let me remove this cover first so we can see what we are talking about. Also know that the heat management under this hood is quite important because it radiates a lot of heat and I have the car parked for 30 minutes now. So what we have here is the mighty machine it's a 2 ur gse 5 liter v8 4969 cc's to be exact the bore is 94 millimeters and the stroke 87 and a half millimeters 12.3 to 1 compression ratio yeah this really is something folks mighty mighty impressive 477 horsepower and i'll have to look up the torque number because i forget that but it's quite impressive it's 540 newton meters its maximum its maximum torque is delivered at 7100 rpm red line is 7800 rpm by the way and at maximum torque peak torque 540 newton meters is delivered at 4800 rpm but even at idle this engine has a lot of torque they like to complain about the underbonnet design of lexus's but i'm willing to forgive it for that there's so much going on in a fairly cramped engine space over here you can see the uh, extruded aluminium strut towers and you would say it's a front midship engine but the the axis the front axis is slightly before this part of the strut towers the struts are leaning quite a bit back so you could call this a front midship engine there's a lot of interesting things going on um, it has both direct and port injection it has variable valve timing on both intake and exhaust camshaft as you might expect it's electric on the intake camshaft i think it's capable of internal egr for emission reasons fun thing about this engine that it is capable of running an atkinson cycle as all other uh, toyota hybrid engines also do bit of fun engineering but what they did you see this line running over here it runs through the firewall to a resonator box underneath the dashboard and that produces all the induction noises so you don't have any fake engine noises in the interior but you do have a lot and i mean a lot of induction noises i uh, think this starts to really work above four four and a half thousand rpm and what you hear in all those videos isn't really the exhaust note of the car but more the induction noise I mean, that's very impressive yeah it's a magnificent piece of engineering i think this will be one of the last v8s unless lawmakers will ease the legislation concerning fuel consumption and emission but this is the holy grail there's one thing i want to show you and for that i need to start the car No matter if the engine is cold or hot, there's always that exhaust bark. Could be a bit less, it's fun, but not always. But now listen, I hope my microphone will pick this up. The only thing you hear when the engine is running at idle 
that you hear the injectors pick. There are no mechanical noises from this engine. In fact, this engine is mechanically super, super quiet. The only noise it makes comes out from the exhaust or via this induction port over here. Oh boy, you think it would fit in my LS400? Probably not. Anyway, let's stop the car and have a quick look in the cargo space. As you may expect, cargo space is almost non-existent. There's room for a couple of weekend bags, but if you can afford this car, you'll probably end up in a nice hotel. There's a first aid kit over here, a tire repair kit over here, and there are some small things, um, a warning triangle and a fluorescent vest, uh, which is required by legislation. And also over here, you have the cover for the windscreen. Um, that's this mesh that's currently installed and I leave that on but if you have that over in in the trunk you almost have no uh, cargo space left but I don't know even know the numbers I will blink it in if I can find it but but that's um, yeah next to nothing but that's not important okay before I show you the interior I want to do that with a closed top so I'm gonna close the hood so you can see how that works and it's nice to know that you don't need to start the car just put the ignition on and there is a little panel in the center console push the button forward side windows lower and there we go I haven't timed the procedure, but I believe Lexus says it's done in about 17 seconds. It's pretty fast and you can do that also while driving the car up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. Okay, uh, let's have a peek inside because the interior is one of the best parts of this car. Let's hop aboard. I already have the ignition switched on, so I have the ventilated seats on. So let's have a quick look in this very, very nice interior. As said, this Ultimate Edition, this car, this very car is number 27 of 165. Um, Ultimate Edition is only available with this complete blue on blue, catchy blue interior. There are very nice interior colors available, but this is single tone, but it's amazing. It works really well and really grew on me. This Ultimate Edition doesn't have the fence and the headrest for the, uh, the neck warmer, which blows warm air, but it does have ventilated seats. Yeah, sorry for the sun and the glare. Sun is quite bright, but this interior is so nice. Everything you touch is nice. There are no hard plastics whatsoever. And if you look at the fit and finish where this, this arm, this hand grip, this rail meets that, it's very sturdy. You really have to pull it to even bend it but the stitching and the way this aluminium fits in there that's such a nice thing all these yeah, metal look uh, surfaces not sure if they're actual metal i think it's supposed to look like aluminium but anyway all these metal surfaces by the way the door grips they are aluminium but it's the exact same finish exact same color this is a beautiful interior and now you have the buttons and direct shortcut to the uh, ventilated seat and heated steering wheel and also the heated seats controls audio controls for the amazing mark levinson audio system as you can see i have my sunglasses over here because there is not a place to put my sunglasses it is what it is you do have a cup holder over here and when you slide this back you have a second cup holder over there and then you can pull this up and there's a little storage compartment and it always it's this 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 slide so nice look at it it always slows down the last end so you can smack it that's the same for this when you open it there's a break over there i like it now having a peek on the rear seats which well are only usable for real small children and when you have this which well are only usable for real small children and when you have this windscreen in place um, yeah you can do use the rear seats below there is a subwoofer for the mark levinson audio system the last thing i want to talk about is the soft top it's a four layer soft top it's 
really well insulated. Noise insulation and heat insulation is great. You can drive 160 kilometers an hour on the highway. That is 100 miles an hour with the rooftop closed and the interior is just as quiet as in the coupe. You really have to drive much, much faster than that to be able to tell the difference between the coupe and this hardtop. Anyway, uh, let's get started and go out for a fun drive. And off we go. <laughs> Our kids on a little boat passing by screaming at the car. I hope it doesn't screw up uh, the audio all too much. Alrighty, let's go. The first thing I want to talk about in the drive segment is the transmission. When you floor this car, really, really thrash this car, it's amazing how fast this gearbox shifts. It's called direct shift. As I said, it's a co-development of Lexus and Isen. And the first five, six gears are really close ratio when you're doing a slow drive. Let me demonstrate. 25 kilometers an hour. Accelerate, it shifts shifts and it shifts and it shifts and we're doing 60 kilometers an hour so it really makes baby steps you can hear the car shift you don't feel anything of it it's a great comfortable cruiser gearbox but I notice when I slow down which I'm going to do right now just going to slow down downshifts and downshifts now it's in fourth gear third gear you can feel slight jerks when the downshifts and I had it happen when I approached the speed bump, wanted to slow down. It really jerked, jolted the entire car. And I don't think that's some oversight on the part of Lexus and Isen, or if it's a matter of gearbox programming. But this car is a press loaner, and I think this car has seen some abuse that might explain the jerking and the downshifts of this car, especially when you're driving in one of the slower drive modes it has normal custom comfort and eco and if either one of those four well maybe not custom you can set it up to sport mode uh, transmission but in the slower drive modes comfort the soft drive modes it is a bit jerky on the downshifts um, in the range from 80 to zero kilometers an hour now we're on the stretch of road where i do the suspension uh, part with all the speed bumps, we're allowed to do 60, we're going to slow down to 60, there's a speed bump, and that wasn't all too bad. Currently, I'm in comfort mode, and you can really tell that the shock absorbers are in a comfy mode. The surprising part about this car is the suspension. More than anything, more than the engine, more than the transmission, the suspension of this car is a remarkable feat of engineering. As you can see, the top of the front fenders are this much over the top of the front wheels, but still it has a lot of suspension travel, and the way the springs and the shock absorbers are set up are surprising. As I mentioned in the introduction, there is the... Thank you, friendly Toyota driver. During the model year update of last year, they also reworked the suspension and I think that really pays off. This is a heavy car and it lost some torsional rigidity. But all in all, I'm really surprised, especially in comfort mode, how comfortable this car is. Now the one thing that really surprised me about this car, I'm driving my normal test route on those small curvy back roads, is that this car doesn't feel out of place due to its size. Yeah, it's a long car, it's a wide car. But thanks to the steering, steering ratio, and the amount of assist, power steering assist in this car, the car is very precise to place on the road, even on those narrower roads. I always know how wide and how tall the car is and how much space I take up on these smaller roads, even with oncoming traffic. It's not harder to navigate down these roads than, in, for instance, in an MX-5, which I found utterly enjoyable on this road here. Okay, time for a bit more fun. Sport Plus mode, manual. Oh, those gear shifts are so fast and so hard. You can really feel a thump in the transmission. And 
those blips on the downshifts. Oh, they are so nice. And in the overrun, you every now and then hit a little crackle, not too much. It's addictive, but blasting by the speed limit with ease and blasting twice, blasting by twice the speed limit is also not that hard. So we have a stretch of highway ahead, do the on-ramp, floor at once. Okay, we're on the on-ramp, three and a half thousand RPM, induction comes in at four thousand RPM. see when it hits the rev limiter it doesn't upshift in manual mode now I think the most remarkable part about this engine is how it sounds at redline it just did upshift 7000 rpm but the engine isn't screaming and, and begging for an upshift it just sounds so nice at red line no matter what gear you in and you run into the lev rev limiter you probably already are exceeding the speed limit so it's a lot of fun but it's highly <laughs> unrecommended in most countries if your uh, driver's license is uh, dear to you Anyway, we're back on the back roads, we're doing a little bit of cruising and then we'll head out to the middle of nowhere where I'll give my final thoughts on the Lexus LC500 Convertible Ultimate Edition. See you in a minute. Well, I'm willing to bet that this isn't the first time you are watching an LC500 video and admittedly I've done the same. I've always wondered what it would be like to drive this car in real life and I can tell you this. It's so hard to capture on camera and on microphone what it is in real life because it's overwhelming. It's everything I expected based on the videos, but even more than that, especially the all the right noises this car makes. The exhaust noises, the induction noises, it's, it's really overwhelming. But also there is another thing that's pretty hard to capture on camera and that's the speed of this car. That leads me to a side note and that side note is if you do those things that everybody else does on YouTube and I just did on the on-ramp in the driving segment chances are you're blasting past the speed limit not once but maybe even twice because that's how fast this car in real life is it's really overwhelming so you really have to keep in mind that you do have to watch the speedometer you can do one of those things even when you're in second and third gear and you wind out the engine to the rev limiter you're blasting past every touch speed limit that's just the way it is so if you really want to benefit from all the performance performance that this car has to offer you really have to have a close section of road or a racetrack at your disposal or be on an unlimited section of the German Autobahn but even then you have to keep your eyes open because not everybody's doing 200 kilometers an hour on the Autobahn so yet yeah, this engine has huge overcapacity for the public road but one thing that surprised me most about this car well actually that's two things is the ability of this car to drive slow to do slow cruising I really expected this car that it would constantly tempt me to go fast and engine was so eager to make revs and go to the rev limiter and I would do all the manual shifting with the flatty pedals that everybody else does but it's not the case if you leave the transmission in auto and go in comfort or in normal mode it's just an amazing cruiser and another thing that surprised me is how well this suspension of this car works um, as I said it got updated and upgraded with a model upgrade of last year 
and this suspension is capable of doing many things not only the fast driving there's so much grip so much control so much feel in the steering and with your butt when you're going fast and going through corners and then you flick the car into comfort mode and well it's not like air suspension but it's coming pretty close and as i just said if you have the top of the tire and the top of the fender well there's hardly 15 centimeters in between but still they managed to get a lot of suspension travel out of that and it's surprisingly comfortable and that's one of the big surprises to me another thing that i like is the updated uh, updated interior as i mentioned i like the design the original design of the dash uh, better now this center section towards the passenger is changed and we have the touchscreen but it's a great improvement and the car really benefits from that yeah all in all i'm deeply greatly impressed by this car uh, this may be a very expensive car with a lot of taxes on it but but when you look at this car in relation to its competitors it still is a bargain and it comes with a 10 year warranty if you do all the wild things that everybody else does driving this car bang it into the speed limit and the manual shifting yada 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 it still is a lexus it won't break down and there's 10 years warranty that's really surprising when you think about it well i've always dreamed about driving an lc500 and i thought well if i had the money which one would i get and i always thought that i would buy a coupe a blue one platinum blue with a dark rose red interior and with a hybrid because i figured the hybrid would be fast enough for me now i've driven this car with this drivetrain and this color combination and now i'm actually pretty sure i want a blue hybrid coupe with red interior because no matter how great this car is there is so much over capacity and even though it's pretty easy to hold back and drive calm and slow somehow every time when you get on the highway and you want to accelerate yeah then the car is eager to go fast and you're always passing the speed limit with ease and i think it's much less the case with the hybrid so from my own peace of mind and for the safety of my driver's license if i were to buy an lc500 I would get a hybrid and now i pretty know for sure don't get me wrong i love this car but hey i already have a lexus v8 now i want a lexus hybrid anyway that being said i want to wrap up this real life car review and i hope you liked following me along if you did please let me know by subscribing to the channel give me a like give me a comment even if you have any questions or constructive feedback just let me know in the comment section. I try to answer to all of your comments. And also, if you want to help support the channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee. All the money that I make on this channel on ad revenue, which is not too much, and those coffees you guys buy me, I turn it back into the channel and buy new equipment. Recently, I bought new audio equipment, and I hope you can tell. So, there's that anyway that's it for this real life car review thanks for watching and i hope to see you on the next one bye